Welcome back to Black Lodge Trivia Night. This is Art sticking with the Lord of the Rings Online book quest. I think this is going to be part 13. We're here. Uh, Angmar. Questing away. Trying to get to level 50. Trying to get through the book quests. I think we're on book... Volume 1, book 8. And the next quest, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a... A fellowship quest. Uh, please, you know, bear with me. I'm just getting over a cold, so it's probably coming through in my voice a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so let's, um, make sure I don't forget to repair all my equipment. I'm gonna skip all that. It's been a little while since I've done Lord of the Rings Online. I, uh, I did a double session of this, and then I hit some interesting spots in Elden Ring and did a double session of that. So, here we are. The journey into Karn Dune will be a difficult one, but uh, Mordorith must be thrown down. Are you ready to travel? Let's do it. Heartened by the gift of Dunakar from Elrond of Rivendell, Gulodir prepares to assail Karn Doom and drive the sword into the unseen heart of Mordorith, the murderous steward of Angmar. Courage may bring hope. Thirst for vengeance could spell doom. <laughs> I had one job, and that was to get my equipment repaired. I did not do it. Uh, let's see how it goes. Greetings. It seems my long imprisonment in Karn Dune, Karn Doom, has served us well. We have come far into the Witch King's keep unnoticed. It would be folly to think, though, that our fortune will hold. Already, Mordorith may be aware of our presence. Steal yourself for the battle ahead. I have a few words of advice to offer you, other than to warn you that Mordorith is a master of trickery and illusion. He will try to break your resolve with his words. Do not let him. Keep to your hope and trust your companions. Crickets. Shall we go? Oh, sorry. I forgot you don't have any friends. Then, uh, you know, just do your best. <laughs> After spending so much time in my care, I'm surprised you've returned so quickly, Gulladir. Have you spent so little time in mourning for your daughter? Oh, you did not just bring that up. Feels appropriate. Villain, I would have died in her place, and it would have been better for you if I had. I can see that you've learned nothing from all my patient instruction. Perhaps simply viewing others through the Palantir was not enough. Come now, Gulladir. Let your lessons continue. You see, Gauladir, over the long years of this age, oops, something they've come, all have failed. Do you wish to join these countless failures in death? Those fallen, they are but more disillusions. Do not let them break your resolve. Let's do this. Now, because it's been a couple of weeks since I've played, I'm going to probably forget half my gambits, but that's okay. Because, again, when you're boosted in one of these instances, you're practically invincible. Usually the person you're rolling with is pretty hardy. Nope, I should have... I don't think I got the interrupt off there. That's alright, again, because... I really wonder if bumping up the difficulty makes the game... I know I've probably mentioned that before, but the idea that, you know, they have these things where you can sort of set the difficulty level. And if you really push it up, my understanding from listening to content creators online is that you really have to pay attention. So... The question then becomes... Does that make it more interesting? Where like every fight is against like somebody you should not be messing with. And you have to sort of fight for your life a little bit. But then does that suddenly make this you know here to chill, play the story, see the sights. Do we have to kill these poor? Okay.
That seemed unwarranted, but okay. Those who opposed the Witch King did so for many reasons. Some sought freedom from Angmar's yoke. Others sought glory. And yet others sought revenge. However, no matter what drove them, what flame burned in their hearts, that flame was extinguished. Now that boar's rush just did a nice... Oh, there we go. So, spear fist, spear gambits do a real number on a group. Doesn't seem to maybe, maybe it boosts my aggro. Maybe there's something that I'm getting for it. Oops. Sort of build up a stack of bleeds. We got the five going. Let's see if four is different. The three going. Looks like one of them didn't take. I have to remember these down here, these sort of doubles, because a couple of them, like Spear, 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 Shield, that's a boot. That'll... Uh, wait, no, not Spear. Yeah, Spear, Shield. That sets up the boot so I can interrupt quicker. Even I, dear Galadir, learned the folly of opposing the Witch King. A lesson I learned from his very hand. As he instructed me, all was torn away. Thoughts of my family, of brothers in arms, of friends and companions. Once my lessons were complete, the man I had been was gone. Even I, one of the Witch King's greatest foes, had become but his servant, a steward upon his throne. So, Goladir, if you still hold your fool's hope, something something. Yeah, let's get some of those boars rush going. I can't tell if that set up a bleed. Because if it did, that's great. Yeah, apologies for that last uh, line from... As soon as he started to finish up, my phone went off. I suddenly got this, like, spam call. And, uh... Just sort of caught my eye for long enough for it to... So how's Gulladir doing? He's doing okay. New deed, the Trolls of Karn Doom. Steal yourself, we are entering the very heart of Angmar. The Witch King built this, his throne's room, to celebrate his terrible, uh, and now Mordorith sits upon the throne as a steward of the Witch King. But where is he? You can see, got the Eye of Sauron, uh, my morale's plummeting. Mordorith, show yourself! And scene. Enough of your illusions and lessons. Ooh, Morniel, but father, there's one last lesson to be taught. Wait, no! No, you are not her. You are another illusion. Am I? Am I really, Father? Does it truly matter? Does it change all that has been lost in your futile attempts to shatter the Iron Crown? Mother was lost. Friends uncounted slain. And for what? Only for you to see your beloved daughter lying dead before the gates of Karn Doom. Give up in this vain pursuit, Father. It is folly to hold on to hope. There is no shame in surrendering when you have lost so very much. No, no. 
My friends, please help me dispel this horrible illusion. I'm going to kill you. Now the trick is, you can see... Uh, let's see. No, please stop, stop. Uh, am I allowed to keep going? My morale is basically cut to a third of what it should be because of... Father, father. Enough. Mordoreth, the false king. Well, Gulladir, it seems nothing will make you see the truth of my words. And if my words cannot convince you of the folly of challenging Angmar, falling in battle before me will. Let's get this on. Can I even do this? What I need to do is I need to heal. Oops. You are wrong, Mordorith. <clears throat> the light of Dunachar, Avenger of the West, shall strike you down! Got the interrupt off, that's good. Vengeance shall be mine. Goladir, do not forget what you've lost. Maybe he's bringing his daughter back into it. Okay, you can see our morale is creeping back up. I feel like his... Eye of Sauron... Effect is ebbing. Not doing much damage, though. Vengeance shall be mine. So now, at one point, I thought, oh, it's no big deal. Like, You know, everything's level 50. There's no worries about, but here we are, we're at level 52, so, oops. Gulladir, do not forget you have lost. Oops, strong one. This, this is not possible. We are now... Where now are your words, false king? False king? I am more justly a king than he who sits before my throne. Let us be done, Goladir. In the end, your victory here matters not. So be it. With the light of Dunachar, I strike thee down, false king. No. No. I have but one last reserve of strength, Gulladir. You have done well, but the light of your blade was not enough. I leave you now. Perhaps, Gulladir, we will meet again. Base coward. I'm not usually a big fan of that kind of resolution. You know, let me figure out... I don't know. They, they do it a number of times where it's just like, I can't be bothered with this guy. You guys deal with him while I leave. And you're like, okay, I guess that's why we can't kill the bad guy yet. What do you need? Mordoreth the Cower has escaped us, but did you notice that the blade of Dunachar was still lodged within his breast? I wager the pain of that blade's light shall be a constant reminder of the evil he has committed. While my revenge is not yet complete, I would wager that 
there will be others who will complete their task. For now, I can take solace in this fact. A moment, someone approaches. Look, to the gate the e of the east opens. Oh, Sarah Oakard. Oh, you have done well, young ones. Old woman, who are you? What are you doing here? She moved a lot quicker here than she used to. Your questions will be answered in time. But for now, know that you have done me a great favor. Boom, plot twist. A great favor indeed. She, she has taken the Palantir. It is gone and with no way to follow her. I fear that we shall hear from that old woman again and sooner than we would wish it. What an unsettling end to our battle. I fear there is much more to that old woman than what we see upon the surface. However, we cannot deal with that matter now. We should leave here before we are overrun with Angmarim or their servants. Completed instance, Mordoreth's fall. We should tarry no longer. Are you prepared to leave? I will show you the secret ways out of Karn Doom and back to Gath Fornir. The gift of Dunakar, Avenger of the West, renewed Gorodir's spirit. And with the sword he avenged the death of his daughter. But though Mordereth was weakened, he was not destroyed, retreating to nurse his hurts and plot revenge. How will this help us in our struggles? Will Sauron maintain control, or will another power claim Angmar? All right. Mixed signals here. Leave me be, but flaming ring above his head. I fear we have not seen the last of the false king. Mordoreth has been weakened, though not yet destroyed. The way, though, is open for others to finally throw down this false king. I wish that it had been I who had driven that foul creature back into shadow, but it is enough to have done what I have. I ask that if you do return to Karn Doom, finish the work that we started. Strike down Mordoreth. Although a creature such as he cannot be entirely destroyed, for he can simply recloak. Such a loss for him will be a great victory for the free peoples of Eriador. Still, there is more that I would ask of you. Okay, again, not to be crass, but let's check out his armor is a nice bump. Probably going to go with that. The weapon sort of is a lateral move, so let's take the armor. I gotta speak with you a moment. Let's see if we can find it and equip it really quickly. Is this it? It is. Okay. Uh, let's see. The victory is an important one, though not as complete as I had first hoped. However, even this victory will give us a brief reprieve from the onslaught of the enemy. I would ask that news of our success be brought to my children, Aragorn, son of Arathorn. Oh, chieftain. Children. Chieftain. Have you met him, then? He is at Rivendell? Rivendell? Go, then, to speak with my lord Aragorn in one of the guest houses, rooms along the road that wind up the southern slope of the Vale of Imladris, and tell him our deeds here. Okay. Uh, new quest, book eight, chapter six, A Watchful Eye. Uh, was that chapter six? So I feel like this is sort of getting ready to wrap up book eight. And I'm wondering if book eight is where the original release of this game ended. I don't know if like, um, I don't know if Forest Shell was in the original game. I, I, I genuinely can't remember. So I a, am at your service. let's repair really quickly. There's a good chance that we're getting to what would be the end of the stories available at, uh, what level am I? 40. Oh. Requires level 46. I'm only level 45. Okay. Again, we'll just sort of clear this out a little bit. 
I never know if there's a better way to do this or if it's just one by one. I don't know if there's a way to like group select or shift click. Oh, I had little side quests I could have done. Oh well. That's okay. So yeah, I, I grabbed some of those like daily tasks because I've heard from other content creators that that is a good way to get XP while you're out doing stuff because you end up collecting 10 of these, 10 of those without even trying and then you've just suddenly got like nine quests all of a sudden done. Let's see, two-handed axe, nope, thank you. Pocket, fate, fatality. I don't think I would ever use this, so I might sell it. Slight boost of vitality, less fate, don't care about maximum morale. I mean, I do, but... Uh, but I want that bonus to XP, because I'm all about getting through the quests. Okay, so I feel like we've... let's see... I think I can let this one go as well. Okay. So yeah, we are headed to... Let's see, tasks. Again, a lot of these aren't even worth doing anymore, so maybe... Now, the only reason why I canceled them is because I think there is a limit to how many questions... Not that I ever really hit it, but... Just to make sure I don't have something tying up space when I'm suddenly trying to take a bunch of quests and it's like, yeah, you can't fit anymore. Given that a lot of these were green, light blue, I don't think I'm going to be losing too much. Although there were a lot of them. I wonder how many of them actually could have handed in. Uh, we're going to potentially... Let's get rid of these. Oh, you can... Okay, you can do that. Because they're fellowship quests. Uh, Misty Mountains, uh, who cares? Mission. What is buried treasure? Got this one ready to hand in. Any others? So we'll highlight that one just to get it off the books. Let's highlight that one because that's where we're headed next. And what I'm going to do is, I don't know where this guy is. He's probably right around here anyway, but I'm just going to speed travel just to get it off. Oh, no, no, no. It's a different area. Okay. Greetings, Shield. Shield. I'm going to take this one because it's worth more because neither of them are worth. I'm going to accept it, but I doubt I'm going to do it. So let's uh, take that one off. Let's make our way to... Rivendell to talk to Aragorn. You know, I'm recording this on a uh, on a Friday. We did not actually put up an episode today. It's Friday the 13th. Coincidence that this is the day we didn't get an episode together for? I think not. But um, it just turned out to be... You know, we, we talked about how, like, oh, thank God we got through the summer. Summer's not over. It sort of uh, reared its ugly head one last time and jammed us up from recording... Uh, I was trying to get something together for like a, a Bookhouse Boys, which is where we sort of 
review or go through an RPG book. And I was sort of thinking of a... I mean, it's not new for how normal YouTubers film it, but I was trying to figure out how to film it in a sort of a way that's more typical for, like, book reviews. Which is, you know, giving the, the viewer a real chance to see the book. And then it tends to get weird because you're also watching the person's hands or, you know, whatever. But... Uh, but I didn't get it quite set up in time. You probably hear it in my voice. I've been sick a little bit. So it just got to the point where I was like, you know what? I could do one of two things. I could stay up till two or three in the morning trying to figure out how to polish this off. Or I can go to bed. Try and get some sleep. And I gotta tell you, I, I ended up choosing the latter. And I think it was the right call. I I think I've got it all set up, so I will at some point do the review. Okay, we can go to different places in Angmar, or we can go to Esteldin. Let's start by going to Esteldin. But yeah, it involved, you know, like, it, it's a setup that I want to... I've done before for when I play, like, board games and stream it. And I figured, yeah, why not put it to dual use? There's no reason why I can't cover both. But, um, I was trying to figure out the microphone situation. I was having a lot of trouble. I'm hoping the trouble's over with now, but I was having a lot of trouble. I have a Rode Streamer X. And the Rode Streamer X, I thought was going to be this great little mini, like, Rodecaster Pro-ish kind of device really sensitive to the USB cables that you use with it. Even when I used the ones that were provided by Rode with the with the device, it wouldn't consistently register the camera as being like plugged in and streaming. Or if it did that, it wouldn't register the audio aspects of it. So like like the channels wouldn't show up. And so finally I tried like three or four different USB cables right before I was about to return the Streamer X. And I think I got it to work. Like I, I think I found cables that it approves of enough to work every time. And so I was like, okay, so let me, and then so I was doing a little bit of a practice, believe it or not, like I, I don't rehearse, but I was like, let me do a quick dry run to see if like my levels are good. Is this even gonna work? And I was like, you know what? I'm having trouble with the microphone. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's on a stand, it's whatever, it's typical, but when I'm doing these kinds of things, like the board games or trying to show something in front of me, I move around too much. And so I picked up sort of excitedly and sort of curious, like, could I, well, I picked up a Rode Wireless Go 2. So, you know, wireless lapel mic. Uh, they are meant to be used wirelessly with their Rode products, like the Rodecaster Pro 2 and the, in theory, the Streamer X. And I was sitting there going like, oh crap, did I just lock myself into, you know, using a, you know, a Rode device for my audio capture, but I think you can just hook the transmitter, the wireless transmitter up to the computer through like an audio cable and maybe that would, you know, just turn it into like an input channel on some other audio device. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. You certainly lose the, or could you do like a little, like quarter inch audio TRS audio jack to XLR adapter and then just plug it into anything. Like, I, I, that's what I have to figure out if I ever realize the Streamer X is a piece of crap. Like, if it just becomes too much of a hassle. But, so I need to sort of see if I have time this weekend to try this new walkthrough. And I'm hoping it gives me the flexibility to just do what I'm going to do, not worry about a mic, like, mic, uh, technique or discipline, not have a microphone right in front of my face so that I'm looking around it when I'm trying to see the board or the book, things like that. If you've seen like any of our streams recently, you've seen that I've sort of stuck with, I, I used to have like a big square microphone in front of me. I loved that microphone. I thought it sounded great, but in day-to-day -day use, trying to use it with this kind of stuff, it just kept getting in the way. 
And so then I finally figured out, like, okay, let me tweak settings for the SM7B. And I don't know if I got it to sound good, but I was like, what can I do for you? It's, it's, it's solid. Let's go to Rivendell. So, right now I'm on the ethos from Earthworks, because I was just like, eh, let's just get bored and see what happens. But, um, make sure you get the full, sick, nasal, every last condenser mic detail. But, um, anyway, so I, I have to sort of figure out this wireless go-to, and, um... I'm hoping it smooth sailing, get it all up and running, and then that might open up some of the kinds of content at least I can record uh, for when I do certain things. So there's certain like, cause, like I mentioned, like part of it was designed to capture playing board games. There are like board games like like the Skyrim adventure board game. Like does that count as an RPG? That's the kind of thing I was wondering. Like, you know, what other kinds of things could we sort of cover? Because I, you know, again, this is for me, the RPG channel. And I wanted to figure out, yeah, if there's anything else. Got Lord of the Rings Online. MMOs are RPGs, of course. Uh, Souls games are RPGs. I've done the old classic Darklands. I want to get some other classics up here. Dragon's Dogma 2. i got to figure out how to get back to that and polish that one off once and for all. But, uh... Yeah, do... Games like, uh, yeah... Skyrim, the board game, or... What is it? Runebound? Rune... I think Rune Quest is the actual RPG from like Chaos and Rune Bound like might be the board game with third three editions. Yeah, you, know, you sort of march around the world. There's a uh, Lords of Engineers or something like that I was looking at. There's you know Gloomhaven. There's you know there's all sorts of different games that I feel like fall into an RPG bucket. All right, let's see what uh, Aragorn has to say. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, Aragorn should... Oh, there he is, okay. And Numenas holds the last of the Silith there. Okay, Book 8, Chapter 6. What are these other ones? Greetings. These are collecting pages. So these are quests I feel like I've tackled partly before, but I've never... I don't think I've ever been able to fully find the pages. Uh, Haldemar took... Now, that is a name I never expected to see on a written page outside of the family trees. Uh, there's a time when every hobbit child in the Shire was raised on tall tales of Haldemar. Uh, yeah. I'll grab it, but again, I probably won't do anything with it. Let's see. Chieftain of the Greetings. Dunedain. More books. Greetings. More books. You have earned great praise. Okay, so, Golodir did not perish, and the shadow of Angmar is, for the moment at least, weakened. I am of a mind that even if Mordorith does finally fall, he may someday return, or another shadow of the enemy will take his place. Still, your efforts were valiant and deserving of praise, Black Lodge. Your name will not be forgotten by the Dunedain of the North. Uh, let's see. I think we can swap... Idrin for the Ring of the Eglane. But let's see what else we got going. Uh, dagger? Nope. Club? That I could use, but again, it's a lateral. So let's take this, the ring. Greetings. And before I forget, let's see. We can lose this one. Put that one in its place. And uh, yeah, let's see what's up. Book nine, okay, so we've finished off book eight. Gandalf the Grey, currently in Bilbo's room on the first floor of the last homely house here in Rivendell, should be informed of the actions of this Sarah Oakhart. You say you've encountered her several times before? Most curious. The theft of a palantir is no small matter, Black Lodge. Few have knowledge of them, fewer still can use them with purpose and accuracy. If this Oakhart is one of those few, her designs on such a powerful item bode very ill. Go now. Speak with Gandalf. 
Boromir. So, you know, I, I've said probably before in a few different ways, like talking about the One Ring Second Edition and how I don't want my Lord of the Rings RPG to be sort of star humping. Meaning, I think the examples, I don't know why I wouldn't use the examples in Middle Earth, but like I was like, when I'm playing like in Star Wars, I don't want to report to Luke Skywalker. Like I want the world to feel bigger. These are people that I shouldn't maybe come across, but I, I don't know. Here, it bothered me less. But I don't know why. I guess, you know, if you're encroaching level 50, you are not some small peon of the world. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Maybe because it's... It feels like such a small part of the game, where in, like, the One Ring 2nd Edition, like, Gandalf is the guy... You know, again, he's your boss. That feels like it's a little much. And this guy's got a flaming ring above him that usually means... Master Elrond wishes to speak with you, Black Lodge. He says the elves have need of the strength of the race of men and wishes you to speak with him about some matter of urgency. Bulwark of the West. I'm going to accept this, but I'm kind of curious if... Yeah. I was about to say if were, if that's the start of something else. I think at some point I was saying that I sort of got the books out of order. That's what I did. I grabbed this and then started doing those quests, and all of a sudden I was on my way in Volume 2 before I finished Volume 1. So I'm going to sort of sit on that one, I think. Let's see. Gandalf is in... Bilbo's room on the first floor. Okay. Elrond, Bilbo's room. There we go. Now, this game does something really interesting. Frodo and Gandalf. So, again, you can sort of guess where we are, relatively speaking, in the books. The Fellowship is here. They're convening. Forward, news of the Palantir. I have no time for discussions. There are still many things to see before I depart. Why do you disturb me? That's a good Gandalf voice. Aragorn has sent you? What's this you say? The Palantir? Stolen? Why do you disturb me? Oh, Black Lodge, I need to speak with you. I have heard of your adventure at Karn Doom, and I am concerned. Besides your strange encounters with her during your travels, I have never heard of this Sarah Oakhart, and I'm troubled by her. There are a few now in this age who have even heard of the Palantir, much less be concerned enough with them to steal them. More so, they have now become dangerous, for Sauron possesses the Ithelstone, which he is certainly bent to his will. Return to Galadir at Gath Forthmere and help him search for Sarah Oakhart and the Palantir. I fear that only evil will come of these events. Maybe this was part of the... Why do you disturb me? I guess I just realized I just have no idea when the base game ended originally. taking in the music. It's such a beautifully done, perfect. If that doesn't put you in Middle Earth, I don't, I don't, I don't know what will. Okay, so we got to get back to the outpost in Angmar. Is that where I've... Yeah.
Although the false king was but a link in the shackles that bind my people, I know now that one day the shackles of slavery shall be utterly broken forever. Greetings, Alfron. Ah, May Fellowship I Quest. No thanks. Thank you for bringing me back to the realm of the living, Black Lodge. My grief is not now so terrible. What can I do for you? Gandalf sent you to help me search for Sarah Oakhart and the missing Palantir? Well, the search will be short, for one of my scouts has found her already. Outside Barad Gularin, the place where the Witch King studied his terrible arts. She's made no effort to conceal her whereabouts, but I can think of no reason that would, this would be so. You will find Barad Gularin in the center of Nan Girth, an evil valley haunted by whites and other dread creatures. Barad Gularin is located in the center of a series of bridges that surround it like the spokes of a wagon wheel. Sarah Oakhart was seen by the tower located at the most southeasterly of these bridges. Go and bring back the Palantir. How am I doing on... Okay. Looking at level 45. Again, some of the things we were doing hit like level 52, even though it was in the base game. So that's their way of keeping up the challenge, even as you hit the max level. I'm just curious about this sort of red raven. Is it connected to Big Bird's Nest there? So we're headed to the southeast. What if that's supposed to be like moisture wicking off like as I ride? Oh, maybe it was a bonus? No. I still have the same bonuses. So you can see here, killing these things might get you some of those pages. I don't know like, what the odds are of that. Maybe that's why I never really got into those quests, because you can just kill those things all day and they, um, I feel like they never really drop. Okay, so I think Nan Girth is sort of where we were. still coming.
I'm gonna try some more of that uh, Boar's Rush thing. Now that I know it does a little... Can I do a five on that one or is it stop it? No, oh, it stops at Boar's Rush, okay. So what's the two? Nope, wrong one. Nope. I should heal. <laughs> Nope, that's the wrong button. This is gonna go great. Just realized I had my fingers misaligned on the uh, on the buttons. Okay, let's try that again. Nope, again the delay caused me to get the wrong gambit. There we go. Again, it's been a little while since I played this. I don't think I've got a five. Nope, restoration, I do. Okay. You know what? Let's uh, put a little hurt on this guy. Lead him out a bit. Didn't take. That one did. Okay. Double that up. Let's heal again just to... I'm actually in the right spot. No. So, let's see if I can figure this out. I um, I want to be on the other side of this structure, but they did talk about being up on bridges. So it makes me wonder. It's like one of the back bridges, but I'm not 100% sure how to get up there. Do I hook around?
Oh, this is interesting. So is she in league here with the Dower Hand Dwarves? right there so the question is how do I get doesn't really tell you how to cut the through fall of Scorbrim, the tower hands have become leaders in desperation they have sent an emissary to Minas Angos to renew the alliance that their Angmar wishes our powers. I can't tell if I got that interrupt off or not. That was a total mess. I was my mouse was in the wrong place. I clicked two wrong skills before I got the interrupt that I was trying to get.
Okay. The question is, though, can I leave this way? And I don't think I can, which is what I was... I was just trying to cut through to see if it was possible. Which means I'm not sure... How to get over there. Hey. Let's see what see what we can do. Question is, can I get up from here, or do I have to find? And I know, in a pinch, if it takes too, too long. What's up top there? I could just burn the coin. But I would like to give it the honest college try to find out where this place is. that queen is like a signature or something. If I can get that off, I'm gonna go after the queen. Might be signature? Yeah, yeah, there we go, I was gonna say. Okay, all right, let's uh, get back on horseback. You know, I was like, uh, you know, you're watching this on YouTube. I never really, I think I said this before in the last Elden Ring video where somebody was pointing out, like, you know, there's certain things you need to do if you really want your channel to grow on YouTube. And they were, oof, 100% right. But... We never really do some of that. So I, I was sort of double checking some of this stuff and I was like, oh, you know what? Some of this, there's little things like the YouTube page really focused on, um, I mean, this is no secret. It's just, I never really paid much attention. Focuses a lot on shorts, which we put up for fun. But, you know, obviously the thing we're really into is are extended plays. So I, I finally figured out how to like rearrange the page a little bit. So hopefully it's a little more organized for people that are looking for, you know, just like our latest actual play, or if not that, like I tried to organize the list by like system. Oops, I guess I wasn't paying attention again. Oh, cause that's a signature. What am I doing? I need to uh, just go all in on healing.
so now that I've gotten a bunch of heal stack, let me see if I can get a bleed going on him. Just to help chip away at the damage. Nope, didn't work. Yeah, give another shot. Got one. Got two. I go for the big one, but I've been. Don't seem to be firing. Oh, got all three. Nice. Go back to healing. But yeah, it just made me realize like shorts were first and foremost on the page, so I moved up like our latest actual playlist. And then beyond that, our latest let uh let's play, like video game CRPG, and then from there by system our actual plays. Here we go. Handle one. I don't think I can handle three. Oh, young one, we have much to discuss. I'm glad you've come, Black Lodge. The time has come for us to discuss several things. You've been most helpful in many ways to me and my friends. We have much to talk about very soon. Thank you for coming, Black Lodge. You've been such a great help to me during my travels. I know you have many questions. We will talk, but first I have one last favor to ask of you. I need your help getting to the heart of this place. I'm afraid I will not be able to make it on my own. Please help me this one last time, and I promise you that I will answer every anything you have to ask. This is an evil place full of unspeakable horrors, but I will guide you true. I only ask for your protection. Seems seems sus, as the kids would say, because you know she did steal a palantir. But are you ready to come with me? A mysterious note from the strange Sarah Oakheart bade the heroes who saved her to meet her at the gates of Baradgura, the ancient retreat of the Witch King of Angmar. Seeking an answer to the mystery of the old woman, Gorodir ascends. Okay. Thank you for helping me this one last time. I do not think I could make it on my own, but the frail old woman I am, being the frail old woman that I am, you have done much for me, more perhaps than you ever will know. I cannot begin to thank you for your services. Come, let us see what can be found here. I do not think anyone will trouble us. Let us go forth. Beware the shadows of this place. Hmm, this place seems disturbingly empty. The classic too quiet. Oh, here we go. Nope. Okay, I was going to say I need to heal up fast. Need to heal. What's this? Nope. What does that do? Crap. Okay, let's see what happens when. Yep, yeah, shit. It's unfortunate this game doesn't have like Elden Rings, you know, the little statues that you can sometimes. respawn at instead of going all the way back to the bonfire. I feel like for certain quests, like this one being an instance, it would have been nice to like just go back to the front gate or something like that. Anyway. So yeah, I was looking at the you know, just like, you know, you just Google like how to make YouTube better. YouTube channel better. And the main thing like I took away like one one video I was watching is like what you should do is you should use this analysis tool to see what videos have gone viral. I'm like, okay. And he's like, then what you should do is you should make another 
version of that video. And I'm like, well, we're not going to do that. Um, so I was like, okay, so what else can I do? And I was like, yeah, you know, just get the page organized better. Uh, didn't occur to me. I, I didn't realize that when you have a, a the YouTube provided watermark in the bottom right of the video that on mobile, well, I mean, not anywhere, but that helps mobile users have a place to click to, survive, uh, to subscribe when they're in full screen. I didn't realize that. So if you have like a two hour video or a four hour video or whatever these, you know, our videos tend to run long, just having the automatic watermark show up at the end doesn't do anything because probably there's a ton of people that don't make it to the very end. So what you actually have to do is I realized, oh, you should, you know, people say you should have it up the whole time. I'm like, oh, that makes total sense. And then you should put a call to action on said watermark. I was like, that also makes sense. So there's just little dumb things that, you know, again, like, cause you know, we don't know what we're doing. Oops, I'm getting my ass kicked here. So, anyway, it was just, uh, and again, I'm sure it's going to move the needle basically zero, but... As I've said before, some of this, part of this is, I'm just kind of curious to learn. You know, what do people do? So it's been interesting. In that regard. What else has been going on? So I feel like that's where I went up last time and I need to get behind it and to the other side. Scar pack lord, can I just get by you? I know you're gonna attack, but can I? So this is going to be, I think, the first video that officially has a bunch of those changes. They might show up in old videos, like if you go back, I assume, but... And again, I don't, like I said, I don't expect anything to really change, but it's good to know that... You know, I advanced my minimal understanding a teeny bit more. So I think this is the level I want, but I'm still curious what the top shelf takes you to. What else has been going on? You know, we got a little further in our Cold War spy game. I don't know if I already mentioned that, but one thing that I got in the mail, I already had the PDF because when you order the physical copy, they're kind enough to give you free charge the PDF. But I got um, from Zozer Zozer Games. I'm not sure. I think it's Z O Z E R. Uh, Hostel Solo. So I have the hostel rules. I very much like the hostile rules and setting. Okay, so they just start us here again. And, um... Now I have the, uh, solo rules for it. And what I... Th I I've always been kind of curious. I was... I know I've done some Karenathalus recently, and I was talking about a thousand dead worlds across a thousand... Dead, I'm not sure what it's called. I don't have it right in front of me anymore. Um, but... So I started looking at that for some, like, solo sci-fi, and it's got sort of a hook that's very reminiscent of this novel 
I really like from the 70s called Gateway by Frederick Pohl, which I may or may not have mentioned before. I definitely mentioned it, I just don't know if it was only in the Cairnothalis or here. And so then I saw that somebody, and so I was like, okay, let me start taking a look at uh, how to get that up and running. And then I noticed that somebody is actually over on the Black Oath the company that publishes across a thousand of worlds. Somebody's already started work on a foundry module for it. So come, let us go, young one. I figured let me hold off on that and see where that foundry module goes. Because I'll be honest with you, <laughs> that book has a lot going on. Okay, now I'm just gonna focus on healing this time. I'm not gonna get too cute. I was trying to do Boar's Rush to take them down as fast as possible. Instead of focusing on Can I pop lead on these guys? I was trying to be cute because I was trying to protect Sarah Okar. Now that I see that she has 24,000 morale, I, I don't think I need to worry about her too much. Hopefully that's enough of a lead to take him out so I can focus on this guy. I also think, oh, that was a mess of a gambit. I think the other thing I wasn't appreciating last time in this fight was just how much my morale is being impacted. Now with Hostile Solo, I didn't see anything specifically made for that for Foundry, but I did see that Cepheus Deluxe has Fantasy Grounds module, so I could sort of do all the importing to sort of reconnect with Fantasy Grounds. But it also is there for Foundry, and Foundry's 2D6 module, it's called 2D6, spelled out T W O letter D six. It's sort of there. Sefi is deluxe. There are sounds up ahead. It seems as if many people are behind the store. Sefi's deluxe original black book traveler from mongoose, their first edition. Um, they got permission for the first boat. Let's just see about opening this door. Castellan Wisdan, the lead master. Greetings, Castellan. Is everything prepared? Oh, damn. Yes, my lady. I've unwittingly helped the enemy. Good. I have gathered the last two pieces we need. I assume one of them is the Palantir that I... With these relics, we now have all that we need to summon forth the Rogbull. I feel like I should be stopping this somehow, but I guess how could I? Take these, Castellan, while I deal with our protector. Now, as thanks, Black Lodge, I shall reveal who I truly am. Sarah Oakhart is actually Amarthiel, 
you now see me as I truly am. I am the scourge, scourge of the north, champion of Angmar. It's no small thanks to you, Mordrith has fallen. Angmar is weakened. Yet Angmar is not without allies. Great Lord Sauron, I call upon you for aid. <laughs> I serve now in Mordor's place. I also seek Narshul, for I will need its power if I am to bring your shadow down upon Eriador. Thank you, Lord Sauron. I will await the servants of the eye. Now be gone, fool. Once I have Narshul, all hope for your pathetic people will be lost. That actually makes sense. She just flat out kills you. Or, you know, whatever. Breaks your morale to the point where, like, you retreat. Instead of, like... Now be gone, I must leave this area and leave my minions to deal with you, and then you wipe out the minions. I like that, uh, she's just like, no. Just straight up basically kills you. Completely breaks your morale. You are a stranger to these lands. Uh, nope, I need to, I, I want to rebuild my equipment because I've died three times, so I assume at some point soon it's going to start to go. I'd be to you. But yeah, so with Hostile Solo, I was debating Fantasy Grounds, relearn it a little bit. Stick with Foundry, where it's probably easier to do whatever. And the 2D6 module for Foundry is really good. It's one of those out there that's made by volunteers that's excellent. Can I... No, it doesn't seem to be a way to select multiple. I mean, what you do is you lock the things you don't want to sell. Hold on to that. And hopefully, well, at some point I'll get to level whatever. 46. Okay, so now that that's taken care of, let's um, keep book 9 going. Thank you for bringing me back to the realm. Oh yeah, I've already. Greetings. This is foul news indeed. To think that Sarah Oakhart was all along an ancient of a an agent of Angmar. If she is indeed the same Amarthir Amarthiel, which only legends speak, then evil are the days to come. You must consider what you have learned. Might I take a moment of your time? I do not know who these servants from the south are, but rumor has reached me that Knights of Mordorith may be in the south. Perhaps it is they whom she speaks of. It worries me that the Knights of Mordorith could be reclaimed as Amarthiel's own forsworn. We must find out where she's going next, but most importantly, we need to eliminate the threat of Mordorith's minions. It seems that there are three places to return that may offer clues to the whereabouts of the Knights. Combe and Breland, Ostgaruth in the Lone Lands, and Esteldin, the refuge of my people in the North Downs. Speak to Constable Underhill, Frederick the Elder, and Dyrvun, the watch commander of Esteldin. Tell them I sent you and do as they ask. Report back to me when you are done. Okay. So we can get to all these places pretty easily, I think. Uh, book 9, chapter 3, yeah. I think I can muster in... Esteldin. So let's start there. Anyway, so... I was looking at the Cepheus Deluxe in... Fantasy Grounds, and it seems like it's pretty well done. It's it's free. 
Uh, is it free? No, I don't think it's free. I think you have to sort of acquire it in the forge. And it was sort of weird. I, I, you didn't, I didn't pay money for it. I had to buy coin. And then it, like it was like a, like the Lotro store. And I, I was like, okay. Um, there we go. Uh, and then I, but then I realized like, you know, Goladir sent you? That as well, for it means his spirit has been renewed. There are grave dangers about, and many have spoken of a new evil from Angmar near the entrance to Ram Duath. I'm quite certain that this is the knight you seek. Go to the entrance of Ram Duath, and you will find him, but be wary. There are many Angmarim in that place. It will not be an easy path. Okay. Uh, just make sure... Yeah, I'm going there. Okay. Um, looking at the Hostile Solo book, the Solo book feels like it's a complete set of rules. I don't know if you need the original Hostile or Cepheus Deluxe, but it does say in Hostile Solo that if you have those books, you can basically use those mechanics for everything and then just use the sort of the Oracle kind of tables from Hostile Solo. If you want if you want like a more I don't know if crunchy is the right word but you know basically you're dealing with the full system where it feels like the hostile solo sort of pairs it down a little bit but anyway so just it felt like foundry was going to be a little more flexible for like creating skills and I could put it into a compendium which again is something I just don't know if Foundry has any comparable thing. So, like, I could then, you know, just have that one companion ready to go, and I could use it, like, if I wanted to create a new world. Or, say, like, Black Lodge, you want to do it in co-op. Um, also, if we ever did it in co-op, I don't think Matt and Patrick would mutiny using Foundry like they might if I went, oh, by the way... We're definitely going to use Fantasy Grounds at some point. I just don't know how or when. It feels like it would have to be something just ready to run. Well, I mean, I do sort of want to try more Call of Cthulhu, and at the moment, I think Fantasy Grounds is the official Call of Cthulhu in Roll20. So maybe maybe that. Anyway, that's a long-winded way of saying I think I'm going to stick with Foundry for entering the hostile solo stuff. And that way I have it ready to go for whatever. And then we'll see how Across a Thousand Dead Worlds develops for Foundry. Uh, but yeah, if somebody's going to put the time in, I'm going to allow them to play it out and then I'll see how it goes. Just like, you know, with Karnathalus, I was all ready to like do it all myself and then I've discovered Oster, uh, Krithlonk. And then I realized, you know, some kind soul put it together on... Uh, in um, custom system builder what chance have you Mordoreth cannot be stopped even if you think you've defeated him he will never truly be dead he was the king of the south in mortal life and will be the king of the north as a wraith lord Mordoreth's will lives on which is more than I can say for you you pathetic man I don't know how seriously to take this fight. Probably more seriously than I was taking some of them, but like I'm almost at the point where I'm ahead in terms of morale. I just got a big bleed on him. So I'll just sort of keep some heals going. But these guys should be a joke. Okay. Head back to Esteldon. And I will say I've always wanted to mess with the 2d6 module, uh, rule set, whatever. Um, 
Again, like it handles... It's got official permission for Mongoose's first edition Traveler, which is sort of their take on the old school black book. Um, it can handle... Can handle second edition traveler if you because there's so many rules tweaks you can make that you can adjust whatever you need to customize second edition traveler from mongoose. It started as a Cepheus Deluxe or Cepheus module, and so it handles all of those versions natively. You just choose, and that's like Cepheus Adam, Cepheus Deluxe, Cepheus. You know, there's a lot. So, anyway. While Across the Thousand Dead Worlds gets going, I'm gonna start taking a look at um, Hostile Solo. The cool thing about Across the Thousand Dead Worlds, and now that I've poked through Hostile a little bit, Hostile as well, maybe more so with Hostile, is that they both involve... Not involve. They both offer the option to make a crew. And um, I think that's cool. So you're not like in Karnathalus, you're a solo character, right? And in Cross a Thousand Dead Worlds, you can choose. Do you want to be a solo pilot, like going off on your own into the into the unexplored dark, or do you want to be a crew of three or a crew of five? And I never quite figured out. You know, I didn't get far enough to start exploring how those mechanics. I'm gonna. Get that femur sound in a minute, probably. Maybe not. Uh, I never got to the far enough into the rules to see how them, those mechanics play out. Uh, hostile, what you do is you decide the kind of game you're looking to do. You know what? I'm going to burn this because I just missed the... And if you don't know anything about Hostile, basically what it is is it is the setting of, say, like the original Alien movie but without necessarily the, the Xenomorph becoming the overriding thing of the setting. How can I be of service? You've done well, Black Lodge. Kolodir will be pleased with your success. I can now give my attention to sending more help to the north now that you've made my way easier. Return to Goladir and let him know of your victory. Okay, so that's one. Uh, let's go to... Oscar Ruth is one place. I thought I could muster in Bree at some point, but maybe that's like a faction thing that I've just never unlocked. There's a warden. Let's see what this warden says. Could I speak with you, Mom? Uh, okay. Uh, and to that I will tell you, as I've told the others, I know no secrets and or none that could be called wisdom. I trust my spear and my arm, and my corselet, and the strength of my heart. And perhaps that is the greatest lesson of our kind, to trust in yourself, the weapon you wield, and the armor you wear. Very well then, that is where we shall begin. If you want, I will see you properly armed, and we will call that a kind of wisdom. I'm just curious what this is, because... Could I speak with you a moment? Uh, let's see. Earrings, battle medallion. I'm gonna accept these just because this is like class stuff, but I just don't know. So I get up my javelin if I do this. What do I need? Collect invader breastplates. Alright, well, I'll grab these for now, but we'll see. Okay, uh, an offering of peace. Stay nope. Book nine. I've never something? never heard of Galadir, but if he is a ranger, as you say, then why should we give aid to him? The rangers did not aid us when we needed had a need. We were forced to rely upon the shades of oathbreakers to win our freedom. Still, we have lost many good men exploring uh, Harlog these days. 
There's rumor that Angmar is there is rumor that Angmar is involved, so my guess is that's the best place to search. Go to Harlog and seek out your evil knight. When you have purged this evil, return to me. Okay. Uh Harlog's down here. But where are Not sure where we're supposed to get some of this stuff, but whatever. So yeah, what you do, like I was saying, like the, the setting for Hostel, sort of like the first alien, like that sort of 1970s, 1980s technology vibe to it. Uh, corporations are just greedy, evil, whatever. The guys are complaining about needing their hazard pay, that kind of stuff. Like, that's Hostel. And then, you know, they have ways to introduce aliens and xenomorphs solo in particular has like this sort of horror countdown mechanic to it that's optional but it's there if you want it but then you decide what kind of crew you are are you like space trucking are you like a corporate response team that deals with cleaning up crises for the corporation are you i forget some of the others but you get the general idea and then that sort of dictates the type of crew you might run. So, like, the space trucking might be a crew of six or seven. And you sort of sketch out character sheets for all of them. Like, the character sheets in... Hostile, Hostile Solo are simpler than the ones in... the full game of Hostel. So that's why I was kind of trying to decide, do I actually want to use the full rules? And I was like, yeah, let me just stick with what Hostel Solo recommends for now. So it's got sort of its own version of the rule list because, uh, rule list, skill list, because the skills for like Cepheus are meant for more like a traveler kind of game. Hostel takes place in the very, very near future, like 2250. It's not very, very near, you know what I mean, right? So, it's not quite so out there, sci-fi-wise. Anyway. So, I'm very curious to see how... Yeah, after I wrap this up for the evening. I might uh, go skim a few pages before I crash. Now, there's enough overlap between the Hostel Solo character sheet and regular Hostel or 2D6 character sheets that it's not a big deal to just use what you need. But, um... So I need to get up this hill somehow. Anyway, yeah, um, when the time comes for the need of another solo game, I hope I have Hostel ready. And we'll go from there.
I need to start prepping, uh... I think Matt's gonna be out one of these weeks coming up, and Patrick and was looking to do some spooky season stuff. Like, Matt and I, when Patrick was having his kid, Matt and I, um, did a bunch of... One-shot kind of stuff. Okay, here we go. You will perish. It's a shame that you've traveled this far only to be defeated. Mordoreth's defeat means nothing. You have no idea what forces are at work in Eriador, and you will die without knowing. Just, um, really curious where to do those warden quests. But I'm really curious to see, because I know uh, Across a Thousand Dead Worlds sort of has rules, I think, for how the crew interacts with each other. I have, like, a lot of, um... Not a lot, but there were rules for a number of different, like, psychology systems. So I could see how you could use those to bounce, like, a three- to five-person crew off each other. So I'm kind of curious to see how uh, Hostile Solo handles running a full crew. You can also be like a uh, colony sort of repair team. Uh, you know, you're trying to keep a colony. So that would be more like single planet based. A lot of different things. Not a lot. I th there might have been like six or seven options. Uh, you could be like a, a marine crew, aliens, as opposed to alien. Since I've never had like the hardcore love of aliens that a lot of people do, that's probably the one that appeals to me the least. Not that I wouldn't try it. I know the alien RPG from Free League has like a cinematic mode, and I think they have um, like a pre made three shot campaign or something like that for, for that style. sort of uh, excited to do more co-op RPG stuff with Black Lodge. Um, it might be a little trickier to figure out when to cut it off in terms of the rotation. But I'm sure that's something we could agree upon. Like, you know, oh, this feels like a good stopping point. Thank you for helping us. I fear to send more men to Harlog, for my people are small in number. You have helped the people of Oscaruth greatly, and from what you tell me, all the free people. Thank you again, Black Lodge. Okay.
You know what? I think the problem is, is that what I need to do is I need to uncheck Wisdom of the Wardens. If I uncheck that, because it kept telling me to come back here, there was a, a thing here, and that's like where I hand it in. It's not where I want to be yet. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know what I should do? I should read the quest, and it says go to the Misty Mountains. Uh, where's the other one take you? Evandim. And Byrox, Bryok is in Forest Shell. Okay, so that's kind of cool. I mean, these are quests. These are not meant to be, like, small endeavors. They're meant to take you, you know, out around the world and, uh... Make you earn it. So, let me see. I, I imagine at some point we're going to end up in Forest Shell, so maybe I'll worry about that then. Misty Mountains. Northeast region. Where's a region? It's, I think it's part of Arian. It's down here where Moria. Okay. Okay. I could I think I could handle being here at this point. I think I'm high enough level to survive. Uh, now I need to go to Comb. What do you need? Troll Shaws, no. Lone Lands Bree. I love that they find ways to weave the old areas back. I love the fact that I've got to be back here, because this is one of my favorite areas. So to narratively have a reason to come here, it's good stuff for me. I know they're probably maxed out, but to have 142,000 when I'm at 1,600. Those stats reek of someone who knows how to actually play the game. You know, they made this um, OBS. They've updated the OBS uh, plugin for the Stream Deck, the Elgato Stream Deck. They've added a button officially now that lets you, like, add a marker. The markers still do not line up to what I think, what I was marking in the moment. I don't know if they're like a certain set time too early or a certain set time too late or if it's, it's but it's not close enough for me to go like oh yeah, yeah it was right here. So I know some of that stuff's still in beta but I'm wondering what I might be doing wrong or what's off to make it miss the mark by so much. Can I 
I'll take a moment of your time. Galadir. Never heard of him. But he sounds like one of those rangers like Toradan. If he's anything like Toradan was, I don't see any reason to doubt him. Well, I'm not sure about this knight you speak of, but there is a new threat in Chetwood, much more powerful than anything you've come across in the past. Perhaps he's the knight you seek. You can find him at his camp near the evil idol in Chetwood. It's not hard to find northeast of here. happen there? Okay, so for some reason I lost access to my horse. I don't know why. Again, 186,000. These guys, are they just up on their, like, valor, their, their deeds, their, all their stuff? The gear, like, did they just max it all out? Oh, level 10. The heady days of youth. had the... Oh, there we go. Frame rate. Let's say. I mean, you can see the frame rate down there below my gambit list is just all over the place. I'm playing at 1440p-ish. Um, it's in a window, not full screen or windowless full screen. I don't know if that affects frame rates. You will perish. Why do you come to trouble me, fool? I have many things to take care of for Mordorith. What? You've defeated the steward and left his throne to Amarthiel? Prepare to die. It's kind of nuts, like, I get more stable frame rates in, um, like, Elden Ring, and, and I wonder how much of that is the server, like, doing a 32-bit technology. Because I feel like I still got pretty wild swings when I was on Angmar, like, the new legendary server that's got the 64-bit tech. But I was also in Swellfleet, which, or... I forget what it's called. Is that right? Which is a new area, so maybe it's not optimized the way the old stuff is, or maybe it taxes the system in different ways. I don't know. Uh, Swan Fleet. Well, Fleet is in Cape Cod. What I was getting confused with.
I think I've encountered one of the things I think they're doing on Angmar and the European server. Yeah, why did I lose my horse coming into the camp here? Anyway, they have this uh, system in place, I think, where you sort of get hunted by uh, by the Nine. I don't know if it narratively makes any sense, but... Um, Yeah, I don't know why I lost the ability to use a horse there. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but it's sort of an interesting system where you'll just be running around in the wilds and all of a sudden one of the ring wraiths shows up. And it took me a while to realize, I thought it was just part of the landscape and I was supposed to fight them, but then they kick your butt. So, I think finally I realized it's sort of like the Shadow Lords of the old Ultima Five game where until you were able to beat them, the instant they showed up where you were, you had to run away. And just flee as fast as possible or else you were a goner. A lovely day, isn't it? Alright. It was the night you saw it and have you slain him? I'm impressed. It's not often we get heroes of your ilk in these parts. Thank you for your help. Please tell your friend Gulladir that your deed is done, and I will make sure we do something about that dreadful idol. It seems to attract an awful lot of attention. So what do we got? We got a dagger. We got a club that's a lateral move. Gives me a little more vitality. Which I guess could be nice. We got some gloves. But it's for a brawler, which I'm not. I'm just going to take the two-handed... You know what? I'll take the club, and we'll get a little bit more vita vitality. Because that can't hurt. Let's see, we got 1542. 1564. Okay, it's like 20... Whatever, a little over 20. Okay, uh, let's see, we got Talk to Gulladir. So we can now muster in... Gath Forthnir. In Angmar, so let's do that. You have done the free people of Eriador a great service. Thank you. While you were gone, I spoke with Lairdin about uh, Amarthiel. And it seems he is the one with whom you should speak. He knows much more about this woman than any other, it seems. We will speak more about this shortly. Uh, what do I want? So, I can bump up my shoulder armor, but I lose some vitality. That's okay. Would you do something for me? Ooh, so we really less. So it was at 1542, went up to 1564, now it's at 1509. Okay. You've done very well. And the only reason I'm so fixated on it is I just saw people with like 180,000 hit points, and I'm like, okay, I feel very emasculated. Uh, you've done well uh, with very difficult tasks, but there is more yet to be accomplished. While you were gone, I spoke with Lairdin about... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to Lairdin, okay. Now, I don't know if Lairdin is in here. Yep, here we go. Mordoreth's defeat is a great victory, but do not be mistaken. The war against Angmar is not yet won. My I, heart cannot sing today. I am loath to confess that I know more of Amarthiel than perhaps any other living, yet still I know nothing of her secrets as Sarah Oakhart. She's become much more powerful than I had imagined. Indeed, 
I'd believed her dead since the Battle of Fornost. It matters not, she's alive, and my pursuit of her must continue. I believe that she is heading to Evan Evendim. She has a palantir, I'm guessing that of Osgiliath, the master of the south, thought lost in Anduin. And if she has any hope of staying in power, she will need to confer often with the lidless eye. She may also use the palantir to find Narshu, Narshul, that token of power she lost long ago. The only place left for her is in Enemas, then, for it may be there th- that the pedestal where once sat the palantir of Enemas still stands. You should go to Evendim quickly and speak with Kalinglad. He is at the ranger camp of Tinadir on the eastern shore. Happy to go back there. I enjoy Evendim quite a bit. Can I muster there? Evendim, yep. Uh, and also part of my warden quest is there. I think. I think that's what I was looking at. Okay, the person I'm looking for is here. There we go. What do you need? Lairdin and Galadir sent you, did they? There must be more than we thought to this growing presence of Angmarim then. I'm glad that they have sent a proven hero to help. How can I be of service? The Angmarim presence in Anuminas is most disturbing, and hearing the news you brought me, I think that is the best place to search for Amarthiel. She cannot have gone too deep into the ruined city, and we cannot let her go any further. I will let you bring five of my men with you. Whatever you do, you must come back with information about her plans. This is most urgent for the Dunedain and for Eriador. We cannot let the Lidless Eye have any more influence in this region. Speak with, it, with me again when you are ready to leave. Wow. Champion 206,000 at level 150. Suspecting that Amarthiel, the champion of Anra, has come to Anuminas, a suspicion supported by the warning of the elf Lairdom, the rangers of the north prepare to infiltrate the ruined city and put an end to her plans. Here we go, we're going into the ruins of Anuminas. I'm suddenly realizing I actually have a One Ring 2nd Edition game next week that I gotta prep for. Um, we were supposed to play about a month ago and we had to cancel. I forget why. And, uh, yeah, so I gotta reread the rules and the adventure, etc., etc. I gotta get ready for that. Are you ready? Hurry. They were ready for us. We must push through if we are to find Amarthiel before it is too late. Follow us. What I kind of like about this, as you can see, like they're level 37. We're 45 to 50, and we're just cutting through them. It makes sense, it's like it's a quick hit special forces kind of run. You know, we're gonna overwhelm them with skill blow through before they even know what hit them. Get the information we need and get out. None can hope to stand against us. Oh, there she is. Welcome to Evendim, Black Lodge. Numenos was once the shining jewel of the North Kingdom. Ooh, getting the full eye. 
Uh, from within its high walls, the kings of men kept watch over their land. Gone, gone, all gone now. The kings, the palantir they used, the people they protected. But fear not, Black Lodge, and my Dunedain friends. For I have brought a palantir to Enuminas, and I will use it to look over my lands as the, the, did the kings of old. I'm totally broken. That which was hidden from me will be found, and shall look upon Amarthiel in despair. And all shall look upon Amarthiel in despair. Come, my loyal servants, my black Numenorians. There is much to be done within my new city. Deal with them. More Guldur. I tired of their intrusion. That's usually how they handle things, and it's kind of a, ugh, you know. Where are you? Okay, I've got my morale back because we've uh, gotten out of range of greater source of evil. Timing off, so I'm not healing. There we go. Am I defeated? There's Kalingad. Black Lodge, you survived where he brought me hither, and I feared what I might find. I did not do well in that fight. Uh, we must return to Tinidir, Black Lodge. I fear that Amarthiel has won this hour. We must plan our next move and quickly, so her victory will be short-lived. Amarthiel, the champion of Angmar, has now also become its regent in the absence of Mordenith. Under the lidless eye of Sauron, she has removed herself to the ruined city of Anuminas, seeking a power to strengthen her position. A dark time is coming for Eriador. A time which may only be averted through pain and grief. How can I be of service? This is grave news indeed. I will send word to Elrond of Rivendell and to Golador, my kinsman. We need help, and quickly, if Mordor is so deeply involved. Thank you for your help with this and for dispatching one of Amarthiel's Black Numenorean lieutenants. We have made a strike, but unless we follow it up with one more sure, Amarthiel will surely recover from it and seek to crush us utterly. Now let's see what we got. Uh... Well, this ring has less going on than the level 50 ring. Uh, it does have more going on than the level 27 ring. Maybe that's what I'm looking at. What's this? Uncut diamond. I keep hanging on to the token of Hornberg because of that bonus from killing things. So I'll take this ring. Um, yeah, I think it's time to retire this. Again, lower on the fatality, vitality than I was, but some other bonus is hopefully worth it. What can I do for you? So we're in book 10, chapter one now, the champion of Angmar. There can be no greater insult than this, Black Lodge. For Angmar's foul regent to walk the stones that Elendil walked of old is an outrage, for which there can be no forgiveness. Amarthiel's minions may hold Anuminas for now. Bada bada. Anuminas. Bada bada. Anuminas. Classic, right? But the Dunedain will not rest until she and all her servants are swept from its courtyards and the very flagstones wiped clean of their taint. 
While you were away, a visitor came to Tinadir. His name is Lairdin, and he is an elf of great reputation. My friend Galadir spoke very highly of him in our youth, though I had not met him before now. He has been given the use of this mustering room in the keep here on Tinadir, and he says he has information about Emarthiel that will be of use to us. He asked for you personally, Black Lodge. Hear what he has to say, and I pray you will return to me with some secret lore of the elves that may aid us in this battle. Turn right as you enter the keep, and you will find Lairdin's room atop the stairs. All right, so we got book nine down. We're into book ten. Usually, I think volumes have like 13, 14 books. Maybe it's a little more, but I think that's the ballpark. You can sort of see where we can get some of the Warden quest items back in Anuminas, up a little bit here. These, uh, the One Ring 2nd Edition adventure I'm running right now, right now the party is in the Ruins of Anuminas. And, um, I'm not a huge to token, uh, token lore guy, um, but a lot of the players are. And so it's been a lot of fun, um, putting them in that location. Uh, because they have so much of their own knowledge to bring to the game. They fill in a lot of lore blanks. Good to see you again, Black Lodge, but we seem cursed to always meet in sadness. The happier day of which I spoke in our last meeting, alas, has not yet arrived, and the days seem to grow darker still. Amarthiel has revealed herself and sits now in judgment within the ruins of Anuminas. Her armies fight within the streets and beneath the shadows of towers against the Dunedain. This much you know. But there is more about Angmar's new regent than is known to Kalingrad, uh, Kalinglad and the Rangers. I've written down much of her story in this letter. Read the tale and bring it to Kalinglad, so he may decide what can be done. You must do this with utmost speed, Black Lodge. More than the city of Dunedain rests upon the answers to Amarthiel's challenge. I can't recall if other people end up taking, or maybe it's just instance where you go to other rooms for later parts of the story. I, I don't recall. Lairdin has written his thoughts down in a letter. Very well, let me see it. Lairdin would ask me to abandon the city to Amarthiel if it meant reclaiming the Palantir from. Uh, okay, uh, let me read. Lairdin would ask me to abandon the city to Amarthiel if it meant reclaiming the Palantir from her. He does know not does not know what he's saying. Goladir always spoke well of this elf, but now I must question his judgment. I will not leave Anuminas in the hands of the enemy. We will save both the city and the stone, Black Lodge, or we will save neither. That is my decision. How can I be of service? Uh, let's see. So we're on to chapter two, the tide of battle. Forgive me my anger, Black Lodge. It was not seemly. There is wisdom in Lairdin's words, but you must see the danger of leaving Anuminas to the Angmarim. If we do not stop Amarthiel's ambitions here, beside Lake Nenual, Nenua, Nenuyal, Nenuyal, she will fortify the old city. Where then do you think her armies will go? 
Think of the Shire, a short march to the sh uh, a sh a short march to the south. I was about to go all Sean Connery there. A short march to the south, or to Trestlebridge to the east. Already beset by orcs out of Angmar. We must turn the tide of, tide of battle in our favor, Black Lodge, before we try to reclaim the Palantir. If we keep Emmerthiel's attention focused on battles within the city, she will be forced to meet our challenges. She will have less time to use the Seeing Stone to find Narshul. My heart tells me this is right, Black Lodge. If you stand with us, speak with uh, Rosaloth and Anuminas, she will tell you how it fares the battle. Pass through the uh, Min Minothrank in front of the city, and you will come to a courtyard, the courtyard of Gwailbond. Rosaloth will tell you what to do to help in this fight. So I think we're going to be heading down, yep, into Anuminas proper. Hopefully we can bang out the Warden quest as well while we're there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in a full circle. Let's go down into Nanuminas, and then I think once I'm down there, I'm going to call it for this session. I think we got a decent chunk done. We got book nine done, definitely. Finished up book eight. I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit. You know, as I was saying, I'm still getting over a cold. But let's at least get ourselves set up for the next session. I'm kind of curious. Um, hmm, maybe there's a way. I don't want spoilers. I mean, I mean, I've played this before, but still. Uh, let's see. Lotro, Volume One. Okay, it looks like it goes up to Chapter Twelve. So what are we at? Ten. So okay, we're getting near the end of Volume One. And at some point, I'll look up. Uh, let me see. How many book quests were in Lotro at launch? That might be a trickier... <clears throat> Getting a lot of other answers here on Google. I thought it was through volume. No. Oh. What do you need? That was volume eight. Volume. Maybe it was the entire. Uh, not volume. Book. But maybe it was the entirety of uh, volume one. What are we looking at? I'm 45 there, 37. Okay. I remember with previous characters doing a lot more quests here. Like, I remember doing quests involving these buildings. I don't know if I did them for this character. But as I've said, I, I like this area, so... In, in the past, when I wasn't so focused on book quests, I, uh, I definitely took on... This is an area where I don't mind uh, spending some time on side quests.
Not sure what my... There's a bunch of stuff I need to take care of this week. Also need to finish editing last week's session. For when it's ready to go. But, um... Maybe I can start getting some, uh... Prep going on. Hostile. Okay, these are some of the things I need to take down. Does it matter which ones I kill? Like, is it the expeditionary as opposed to the dead eye? No, I guess not. That was easy, all right. Okay, so I just need the spear now. Where's the spear? Uh, let's see. The spear of Bryak the Garadan. That might be the one that's in uh, Forest Shell. Yeah, yeah, okay. So what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to get deeper into... Yeah, there we go, across that bridge. But again, as you can see, the idea that this game... The thing that this game does so well that I've always enjoyed is the idea that within the front lines, there's this out... That's like the, the outpost in Ang, uh, Angmar that I like so much, that Goss, the fourth near or whatever. This is the same idea. You know, there's the battle for the the ruins of Anuminas, and um, there's a foothold that we just can't yield. And I like that. So yeah, let's get a little deeper. So now there's these flags here. I thought there used to be a system in place where there was an ongoing battle. And so who controls the city could fluctuate. So maybe that was a, a thing they used to do when the game was a lot more focused on group play. Let's see if I can run by these guys. Yeah, I'm not... I would need to be level 47, I guess. Oh, but here we go. Okay, so I'm here. Rosaloth. 
is right there. Eavesdropping. Or these friendlies. These are friendlies. Okay. If we did not hold this position, the gate would be closed to us. Hail, friend, and well met. Hail, Black Lodge. You can see the battle goes well. Eh, I don't know about that. We have managed to secure a Gwail band from the forces of the enemy. The battle was fierce, but we were joined by a number of adventurers, and victory was ours. You want to speak with uh, Fainalig. He is coordinating our defenses from Ashad Garthen Garthadir, the position we have thus managed to hold. You will find it southwest of here in a higher level of the city. You are fortunate that we have taken uh, Gwail Band. Now that the gate is under our control, you can gain access to the higher level much more simply. You will just need to climb the short hill to the southwest, pass through the gate, and work your way south and west until you reach uh, Ischad Garthadir. Otherwise, you would have quite a journey ahead of you, a long swim west to Garanon, and then a climb through the city. Okay. Southwest here. So yeah, I guess we can cut through. Maybe that was part of it. Maybe like in the old days, like could the gates be closed if like they didn't hold this position? So, okay, let's look at the map for a sec. You can see here there's an, a new marking. So maybe it still does change. I don't know. There's just nobody here, though, right? There's barely any other players. So they can't really count on that kind of activity. Help them out a little bit again. Fellow wardens. What kind of quest are we looking at? Might I take a moment of your time? I definitely quested here for a while. Because again, I really liked Inuminas. Greetings. Welcome to a Chad Garthan, dear. Black Lodge, I am sorry that you must see Numinus thus, taken by Angmar, corrupted by Amarthiel. We will all do our part to drive them out. Listen now, for there is much to do and little time in which to do it. What is this, chapter 2, chapter 3? Could I speak with you a moment? We have had both gains and losses in the past few days, Black Lodge, but we cannot hold out forever. We are stretched too thin, and Amarthiel simply has too great a force. Every position we lose brings us one closer to utter defeat. I have needed your strength, Black Lodge, and the strength of your allies. Again, crickets. Friendless. Feel bad about it. Two of my rangers have repelled attacks on vital possessions, and I worry that their strength may be faltering. Guanil has fought to drive the Angmarim from the port of Anuminas, north of here, upon the water. I fear that she cannot withstand another assault, so two in this situation for... Torchurian. Torture I don't know. Currently on guard at Adenon. A small gate west of the docks that provides access to the western shore of uh of Nanuil. Hurry now to Guanil and to Torchurian and learn how to stand their defenses. Uh, while you seek them out, I would ask you to defeat any of the bow-wielding Angmarim archers you see within the city. These ranged attackers are extremely dangerous, and several of my brothers have fallen to arrows let fly from hiding. Alright, let's take a look at the map, just see where we're going. 
anywhere. Anywhere is fine, apparently. I guess that's to kill the archers, but we've got uh, one position here to the west, and we've got one position, you know, oh, three positions, sorry. So, uh, so oh, a fourth position's over here. I wonder what, the, I wonder what that's... But we'll figure that out next time. Um, I feel like this is a good place to call it for now. Uh, again, it's good to uh, get back to this. I, I, I did a couple in a row for um, Elden Ring because I feel like I'm making some progress there and I was really curious to keep going with it, but uh, it was good to get back to this and uh, continue the story. I knew I knew Sarah Oakenheart was not who she portrayed herself to be I mean, because I remember that part. I don't remember the specifics of where it goes later, but I did remember she was a big twist, so we've uncovered that that source of evil, and uh, we'll get back to trying to kick her ass next time we're here. So, thank you again to everybody who checks this out. You know, it's the same spiel as always. If you're watching this, then you've already discovered our YouTube channel. If you want, like, subscribe, etc. Leave comments if you want. Hopefully, if nothing else, though, you know, you got to relax and enjoy some of the book quests and see how they go. And just, or just have it on in the background while you did something else. Just, uh, just to sort of traipse down uh, memory lane a little bit if, if you were ever into this game. Um, we're, you know, we're still coming along with uh, mostly weekly actual plays of different systems. We haven't had a, a, an RPG discussion in a while, but um, we have been getting more play in. Uh, we're still doing Eat the Reich. Patrick is running that as of the time of this recording. It's September 2024, mid-September. I'm doing our Mithras Imperative Cold War Spy game. We just did a couple of sessions of that, so we're making some real progress. And, um, yeah. Matt's prepping some, some I think, Delta Green. We're going to do some spooky season one-shots here and there. Maybe we'll get back to Liminal Horror. I really hope we get back to Liminal Horror and finish that up. Matt was running that and was going really well. And that was meant to be something that could kick off something bigger later on down the road. So we'll see how it goes. But, uh, yeah, so... Summer's almost over, so I'm really hoping, you know, we keep saying, oh, we got through summer. We got, I'm hoping we're almost back to normal now. So, um, yeah. Thank you again. Um, if you want to come chat CRPGs and RPGs, you can jump onto our Discord. The link is somewhere here on the channel. Uh, if you want audio versions of our actual plays or some of our discussion podcasts, just search for Black Lodge Trivia Night, wherever you get your, wherever you get your podcasts, and we should show up. But... Otherwise, you know, thanks again. Hope you enjoyed this and uh, we'll be back soon with more book quests here in Lord of the Rings Online. Take care. <laughs>